So Mr. Trump told you immediately after you asked him specifically about General Soleimani and, and Hezbollah and Hamas that he didn't think the questions were fair. Why do you think they are fair? Uh, gotcha questions, which I don't think are fair, are uh, tricks to attempt to embarrass people. I provided the name of General Soleimani. I talked about the other people. I didn't ask him for names, and I didn't ask for groups. And so I don't think a gotcha question that doesn't quiz you is a gotcha question. I think it's a serious probing question as to what do you think the Iran deal is going to mean for these terrorist groups when Iran gets $150 billion in General Soleimani is such a talented terrorist. And that's what he is. He's a very talented terrorist. And so uh, perhaps what I do is sometimes assume that the people that I've been talking with, especially Republican candidates, are as well-read as I make myself be. I had McChrystal on for a couple hours, General Stanley McChrystal. I had Mike Morrell on for a couple hours. Soleimani and his forces come up a lot in those conversations. And so maybe I've got to set them up a little bit better. But there is no animus to Donald Trump or any of the people who come on the show. And right. by the way, he's not the only one who pushes back. John Kasich likes to push back, even though we're fellow Buckeyes. Uh, it, it just happens, and I listen, yeah. and I take under advisement whether or not it's a gotcha question. I just don't think it was this time. It, what's interesting is, if, if you listen to the interview or read the transcript, and, and you always post both, Trump's answers on, on some other subjects, like China and Israel, were, were pretty thoughtful and, and thorough, even if you disagree with them. In fact, the answer on the PRC, I asked him, how would you react if you're the commander-in-chief and China sinks a Japanese or a Philippine vessel, which could happen given tensions in the South China Sea? And he gave a very thoughtful, considered answer that was very Nixonian. Uh, I'm not going to tell people how I'm going to respond right now. To do so will limit my options in the future. That's a paraphrase. That was a very strong answer. So, uh, you know, Donald Trump overnight, it bothered him more than he liked it. But that was the sixth of six interviews I've done with him. More often than not, he comes away feeling like he got a chance to say and speak his piece. When we do the debate together, that's my only objective, is to ask questions fairly of all the candidates that Republican primary voters want answered, and not to do gotcha questions, because I really do genuinely hate them. Uh, I, I think back to the question from four years ago about whether or not states were banning contraception. That's out of nowhere. It's got nothing to do with anything. But Soleimani actually came up in the first debate. We're going to be at the Reagan Library. Reagan was mocked for not knowing details as a candidate, and yet I know you view him as a great and effective president. Is Trump's answer that he'll have people who know all the players, is that good enough, do you think? Uh, it could be for many people. I, I honor Ronald Reagan. I worked for him for five and a half years, and I was in his White House counsel's office, and uh, I honor the man, and I worked for Richard Nixon in his retirement, and I honor that man. I take foreign policy very seriously, Jake. Uh, for some voters, it will be enough to say, I will go and find the new Petraeus, the new Stanley McChrystal, the new James Mattis, or maybe I'll bring them out of retirement. And I've asked a lot of questions of, of candidates about whether they'll do that. But for some others, it won't be. That's why I try and ask questions that GOP primary voters will find interesting. For some GOP primary voters, they want more than that. For a lot, they don't even need that much. It's not up for me to decide. It's not up for journalists to decide. It's for us, I think, to ask questions that illumine, and I think yesterday's conversation did, and the debate will in a, a week from Wednesday, illumine for those voters what these candidates will do if they're the commander-in-chief in wartime.